remember when Mary Lou said you want I don't like spider snakes And that ain't what it takes to love me You fool, you fool I don't like spider snakes And that ain't what it takes to love me So she said, come on over here I was nervous as you might guess Still looking for something to slip down her dress And she said, let's make it perfectly clear She said, I don't like spiders and snakes And that ain't what it takes to love me Like I want to be loved by you Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. If you keep coming back for more videos, please consider liking and subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Plus, you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And starting now, that will give you access to exclusive videos as I'm now posting videos of my pen unboxings as I receive them for members. So you'll get an early preview of upcoming pen reviews along with your cool emojis, stickers, and badges. Prompted by Doodlebud to anodize my titanium pens, I had so much fun doing that project and I was so impressed by the results I obtained that I set out looking for more titanium to colorize. I searched AliExpress for a titanium pen and came across this titanium tactical pen. What intrigued me about the pen was that it's convertible. It can be changed from a ballpoint into a fountain pen. Why would you need a tactical fountain pen is beyond me. Perhaps any fountain pen can be weaponized. But that would mean we'd have to give up our preppies along with our shoes at the airports. I always thought that the lethal part of shoes was removing them. It stinks in here. But this tactical pen also has a glass breaker on the end, what some people in the pocket knife trade call a skull cracker. My brain hurts! <laughs> It'll have to come out! The main thing for me is that the pen is made out of titanium, so it will anodize nicely. I showed this pen to my son and he was totally enamored of it. So I offered it to him and asked him how he wanted it anodized. Once I've reviewed the pen for you, I will attempt to anodize it to James's liking and then I'll let you know what I think about the pen. But first, let's take a look at this very interesting convertible pen right now. When I anodized these Moon Man Majon uh, titanium pens, the result was so spectacular for me that I set about looking for something else that I could anodize quickly. And so I set out for another titanium pen and it's a bit of a weirdo. So I'm gonna unbox that because it's just arrived. So let's open it up right now. And it's interesting because it comes in a nice little case. This, all I know is it's called a tactical pen and it has a fountain pen nib and a ballpoint nib. A little zippered case. Well, I can see why they call it tactical. Here's the pen. Here's the extra nib, I would guess. Yep, so the fountain pen nib is considered the extra one. Because what weirdo would want a fountain pen in a tactical situation? Well, me. And here, woo. This is hefty. Tactical titanium pen. Some Torx screws holding it together, which might mean I can take it apart. Geeks like that. And it's that's not a, a ballpoint right there. That is what in the in the knife community they call that a skull cracker. Fezzik, check his memory. but it's called a, uh, a rescue device that you can break a windshield with it in an emergency. It unscrews. And there is the nib from the ballpoint 
take the safety thing off and there it is and let's see if it comes apart even more it does and there's the guts black on black I didn't see it on camera there are some cartridges in here and they are standard international so yeah they go in there we'll have to see if that fits the converter and whether that converter would fit inside the pen there's a nice rubber gasket right there as well so that's how quick oh and it closes up nicely too that's how quick and easy that is and it posts well the barrel is the section so that's not bad so I'll have to see whether I can anodize this as well but I'll do a review first and then I'll see whether I can make it a rainbow and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen I'm going to try to show both the fountain pen and the ballpoint features as I go overall this is a long relatively heavy pen weighing in around 40 grams when it's a ballpoint it weighs 43 grams from the top we see what looks like a spring-loaded clip with the top of it running across the top of the finial I was certainly fooled by it it's not spring-loaded at all the clip certainly does intersect the top of the finial but though it extends beyond the cap it is held firmly in place by two torx screws I tried loosening those screws to see if I could remove the clip to prepare it for anodizing but they would not budge in fact they destroyed my torx screwdriver bit I suspect those screws are titanium as well as they are harder than my steel torx bit while I was fiddling with the clip I discovered another cool thing about it it sings the clip is like a tuning fork and it plays a middle D note listen the clip is usable even though it isn't spring-loaded the cap is straight to the section which is then straight to the barrel which is in turn straight until about here where it begins to taper away very slightly by about a half a millimeter and then it has a bullet shaped end finial uh, which has an embedded glass breaker the cap unscrews but you have to hold on to the section because it might unscrew the barrel and it unscrews with about one rotation to reveal the number five size generic Chinese steel nib and black plastic feed the feed and the nib are friction fit not part of an unscrewable nib unit the section really is part of the barrel as the separations from the cap to the section and the section to the barrel are almost seamless the front of the section has the large block style cap threads and those threads and the edge of the section here are sharp uh, but you aren't going to be holding the pen on these parts anyway but these threads are really awful they're out of sync with each other and make capping and uncapping the pen really difficult then the section unscrews to reveal the ink cartridges or in this case a converter that I installed the pen takes standard international cartridges and two are included in the pen case this converter is from my Majon RS1 and is the only converter I could get to work with it even the real Kaveco Sport converter wouldn't fit and the barrel will not accept a second cartridge as a spare the ballpoint's nose cone and section are very similar to the fountain pen section as they each have silicone o-rings to help keep the cap and the section from unscrewing while in use the inside of the cap shows no kind of seal the o-ring might actually help the fountain pen nib from drying out these sloppy threads certainly won't the cap posts but not very deeply or securely and it's metal on metal and it tends to scratch the barrel I've already made a couple of scratches on that stainless steel from the cap posting unposted the pen is plenty long enough and the pen can be gripped from almost everywhere that seam between the barrel and the section is almost non-existent and even though it's shiny metal it has a micro texture to it that is both smooth to the touch uh, and also actually fairly grippy uh, you can grip it without slipping or without creating fingerprints I bought this pen on Aliexpress for $26.31 including $4.35 US shipping now let's look at some size comparisons 
And here is the no-name brand Titanium Tactical 2-in-1 pen with a Wingsung 601 Flighter, a Moonman TI-200 Titanium, a Lamy Studio Palladium Color, and a Cross Calais. Now let's look at them posted. And here are some of them are posted. I'm not going to post the Tactical Pen or the Lamy Studio as those get abrasions on the barrels when you post them. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the generic brand Titanium Tactical Fountain Pen and it has a generic number five size steel nib which has no size marking on it and I'm going to call it a fine steel number five. The reason I'm calling it a fine is that this line it creates is 0 0.5 millimeters which is a Western fine and a Japanese medium. The nib is nicely smooth with some real toothy kind of feedback which is actually very nice, very pleasant. And the pen is relatively wet as well for a generic number five size steel Chinese nib. I was actually very surprised about this. I was expecting a generic Chinese nib failure and got a very smooth, relatively thick line nib instead. I'd already lined up three or four nibs to swap with this one when it turned out to be horrible as I expected, but it didn't turn out to be horrible at all. And the ink today is Diamine Salamander. And it is a very dark gray, but greenish gray ink. It's, uh, I figured an olive drab ink for a tactical pen would be appropriate. It is hard to see the green in it when it's so dark and close to black but next to a black line you can really see it. As to line variation, well, this is a very, very stiff nib. And so there's no give in it whatsoever. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's thinner and drier, but it's actually very smooth and it works. Again, surprise, surprise. A nib that you expect is going to be awful turns out to be pretty good. And some quick writing. Doesn't seem to be having much trouble keeping up at all. Now let's check out the ballpoint. It swaps over just that easily and it's a ballpoint and that refill is generic so you can put any ballpoint you want in. But this one was black and as a ballpoint pen it's got a nice balance to it. It does click a bit though when you tap it on the paper. So uh, that might be a feature, it might be Morse code. What's it say? <laughs> ah, shut up. What's that mean? <laughs> you too? Help send more ink. So before I get to my likes and dislikes about this pen, I'm going to film the anodization. I'm gifting this pen to James, and he requested the body and cap of the pen be blue, but the clip 
and the section, this part here, be yellow gold. So it would be blue, blue, yellow, and yellow band there in the center. And I couldn't get this clip off because of those torque screws, so I'm going to dip the entire pen uh, into the low voltage to get the gold. And then I'm going to remove the sections and they will already be gold, so I'll set them aside. And of course the barrel I can make it go blue and then I can make the cap go blue but the clip would go blue too. So I'm going to mask it using this liquid mask. I'm just going to paint this liquid mask onto that clip and then dip it in to get the rest of the cap blue and then peel the mask off and it should still be gold. We'll see. That's the plan. Okay, so let's do a little bit of an overview of the playing field here. I've got three 9 volt batteries. I'm going to start with one and then move to three. And I've got a Tupperware container, like a sandwich container, about three quarters full of water with about a tablespoon or so of baking soda in it. And then I've got a El Cheapo stainless steel fork. And I've got one lead of the terminal attached to this end of the fork and the other end to the negative terminal of the battery. And I have the positive terminal of the battery to a lead that goes to this end, which has um, two strands of titanium wire that I've braided together and then braided that into the end of the uh, positive terminal. should also mention that I've removed all of the O-rings from this as well. Be interesting to see whether those threads are titanium or stainless steel. We shall find out. So I've attached the titanium wire between the section and the barrel and screwed it tight so that we have a good electrical connection. And then I can use the titanium wire to dip the pen. This is only 9 volts at this point, and so we'll see how it does. You see some bubbling happening. And that's been about 30 seconds and it's gone to a very very light gold very very light and I'm only going to do it for a few seconds because I don't want to go past that gold let's see how we do certainly going gold and faster there now it's really getting yellow that was just about 10 seconds I put on some gloves and I wipe these parts down with some Windex just to get any grease off. I realized that I was putting it in with my hands. And as you can see, it's a really nice gold color right now. So now I'm going to do the same thing with 18 volts uh, to get this ballpoint the same color as that. Here we go with 18 volts. That nose cone is gold. Now for the masking. So I took a small paintbrush and painted on a couple of coats of this liquid mask onto the clip, but we'll see whether that works or not. And the other thing of note is that those screws, those torque screws right there, are still silver in color, so that means they're stainless steel as well. Let's see whether this cap goes blue. I've got three batteries on it right now. Well, it's certainly going a darker co or copper color, and it's starting to blue a little bit. I think I'm pretty well past that early blue. I might have to go all the way up to the high voltage blue. There seem to be two blues in the spectrum, and the lower blue was at like at 18 volts or something like that, but I never saw it. So consulting my chart, I see that 90 volts is a blue, and then 95 goes into a blue-green, whereas 75 volts, just under the 90, is at a pinkish kind of a color. So I'm going to put 10 batteries on this and dunk it quickly, and we'll see whether we can get that deep blue. So this is 10 batteries, 90 volts. And I see some of that masking is coming off. Now we'll see if we can get the barrel the same color. Notice that the, the glass puncher over here at the end 
has become very oxidized. Very, very pale blue. Very, very pale. So it might have to do with the uh, content of the titanium. I'm not sure. But let's put these pieces together, take off the mask, and see what it looks like. So here we have the result. Here is the cap. You can see where the masking came up. It got blue back here. Uh, but that clip actually stayed gold, which was nice. And I got a light blue on the barrel and on the cap. And of course the sections, like a rose gold almost. I put the O-rings back on, cartridge converter back on. And there we have it. So the section is a different color. The clip did not maintain that same uh, copperish, rose goldish color. Uh, but I probably needed more masking to be able to defeat that voltage. But all in all, I think it came out very nicely. And the other thing I noticed was that the what I thought was stainless steel on the threads actually is titanium because it went uh, that goldish color but not quite as much and there we have the ballpoint i think it's very attractive so i'll be right back with my likes and my dislikes about this pen so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen well let's start with all my negatives because there are a few and i want to end on a more positive note the worst thing about this convertible pen is the cap and barrel threads they are horrible some cap threading makes it a little difficult to cap and uncap a pen, but it can usually be accommodated. Kind of back off the threads first until you find a click that indicates you're at the start of a thread, and then you proceed. But that won't work on these blocky, awful threads. There's no way to find the beginning of it because it just won't sit in there properly. And so every time you cap it and uncap it, both the barrel and the section, it uh, becomes... A challenge you think with all the precision that they show in getting these seams between the cap the section and the barrel almost seamless you think they'd be able to get the cap threads done properly but since there's no brand name on this there's no place you can send Karen to complain to the manager go ahead put me on social media you're a little pop seriously you I have, have a right to speak deal with that. so let Cops that are yeah. Yeah. I know I never thought I would like meet one in the wild yeah I know and the lazy engineering and design just keeps on giving. These sloppy O-rings. They just machined the awful non-meshing threads and completely left out a channel for the O-rings. I mean, it's being machined on a CNC lathe anyway. So just design and code in a small channel right in there so the O-ring drops into place rather than getting all caught up with the threads. Like this one here keeps getting caught in those threads. And one of these days it's going to get chewed off and break and if you put a couple of channels into there with two smaller o-rings you might get a little bit more purchase on that so that when you uncap the pen by grabbing the cap and the barrel it doesn't unscrew from the barrel first instead of where it's supposed to on the cap you need to hold on to this to be able to get it to uncap properly and what about this non-spring-loaded clip well visually the idea is there but instead of the two screws, just make a pivot point and put a spring in there somewhere to make it a spring-loaded clip. Again, I'm no engineer, but I think that would be possible. I guess that's probably too much to ask for a $30 pen. But at least make the damn thing fit flush. Look at this, how it sits out there. And that shape is there for it to sit down inside that finial. It just looks like the piece has been cut so that the holes are not lining up. But that end there is supposed to line up with the the outside edge of the cap. So I don't know. Is that aesthetics? I think not. And there's no cap liner. Perhaps the O-rings will seal this nib from drying out. But the addition of a plastic cap liner here might have made it possible to post this cap on the barrel uh, without marring that surface. I got these scratches the moment I unboxed this pen. Nice. And finally, they provide two cartridges with this really cool case. Uh, but then when you put one cartridge in the section, you can't put the spare in the barrel. How tactical is that? 
And what do I like about the pen? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's titanium. Well, at least, some titanium at least. It changed color. I suspect that the titanium content of this titanium alloy isn't as high as, say, on this Magon RS1. Look at those deep colors that I got on those. Look at that barrel. It goes to that deeper, deeper blue. I got these purples and pinks on it. Uh, I didn't get anywhere near the saturation uh, of those colors on this pen. Again, I'm no engineer, but perhaps some of you steel rings out there might be able to tell me in the comments, if I'm wrong about my suspicion, that the titanium content of the titanium alloy will affect the depth of colors when anodized, and that's why I'm seeing the difference here. That's just a guess. But the best feature of this pen was a surprise. I fully expected this nib to be awful, uh, and it has been the opposite. It's one of the smoothest and juiciest number no. 5 size steel nibs I've ever tried. Other things I liked were this cool zip-up case, the non-slip micro texture of the barrel and the section, and the easy way it converts to a ballpoint. I've sent photos of the pen to James and he loves the look. He'll be by to pick it up this evening. And I'm really pleased with how this project turned out and I'm happy to have been able to share it with all of you before I hand it over to him. My daughter, who is a real tools and tech geek, being a musical instrument repair technician, was totally intrigued by my annotization video of the Majon RS1 and the Moonman TI-200. So when I saw her face, when she found out I was doing an anodized titanium pen for her brother, I immediately ordered another titanium pen for her. This one is only a ballpoint, but it has that cool bolt action feature that I know that she'll like. But shh, don't tell her, it's a secret. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.